This video demonstrates how to tag disclosures in WDesk. The objective is to provide a high-level overview of how to properly apply XBRL to a new disclosure from start to finish. The steps will follow include reviewing your disclosure taxonomy, tagging, setting XBRL fact properties, reviewing the XBRL outline, and running section validation. Here we have a short example of a new, untagged, share-based compensation note. The first step when tagging a new note is to read and understand the note. Then you'll want to review the disclosure taxonomy. Here I've preloaded the taxonomy analyzer with a search for disclosure of share-based compensation. From the disclosure of compensation related costs share-based payment text block that we have here, I've chosen the information icon. And here we have a detailed tab and this indicates that this is probably something we can use for our level one tag. Then when I click over to the Presentations tab, I can see where this tag sits in the taxonomy and analyze that section, and I can look for the other tags that I'll need for this section. So as I scroll down here, I can see not only the Level 1 tag, there's a tag that's highlighted here at the top, and then we scroll down, and here we can see the roll forward and the tags that we'll need for our table. This helps us quickly find all the tags that we'll need for the disclosure in our document. Now let's go back to the document and start tagging. First we're going to do the level 1 tag. Select the section from the note title excluding the note 5 and the period at the beginning all the way through the end of the section. Now we'll go to the blog tag icon here in the toolbar. You'll get a pop-up asking if the selection should stay with the end of the section and we'll choose yes. In the XBRL text block window We'll choose the link here for search line item concepts. This takes us to the Select or Create XBRL Outline section wizard. The wizard helps us create and build an XBRL outline. Under Current Selection, we'll choose an entire footnote L1, so the top radio button. And then for the Outline section, we'll use Create New XBRL Outline section. We'll need an outline section because the new disclosure does not have an existing outline yet. In the next step, we'll choose Note Disclosure here at the top, and then we'll enter the label, so Share Based Compensation. We're giving the new XBRL section a name, and the section name should match the note title in the document. And then we'll indicate that this does not contain a significant accounting policy. And then we can choose Next or the next step here to the left. Here we have our taxonomy reference. We can see the one we were looking at in the taxonomy analyzer called Disclosure Compensation Related Costs Share-Based Payments. So let's scroll down. And here we have the one we were looking at, so we'll select that. And that loads the taxonomy tree below. Now we'll move on to the heading or abstract. And here's the one that we were looking at, so we'll leave that as it is. And then we'll move on to the optional step to add a table concept. This is if we were going to be dimensionalizing the level 1 tag, but since we won't be doing that, we can skip this and choose Finish. Now the XBRL concept search box comes up, and we'll look for that disclosure. And we'll need to enter disclosure of share base compensation. And here we can take a look. We have the data type filter here, and we have that here for text block. And then we can search. Now we can choose the second item here. This is the same one that we were looking at in the taxonomy analyzer. We'll accept that tag, and that'll add it to the outline. So let's take a look at our outline here to the right. So here are the things that we've added. And here you can see that there's a red highlight around our XBRL text block window, so this is indicating that we have an error or we have something missing. In this case, the fact is not yet complete because we don't have a date yet. So we'll choose the link for search dates, date ranges. And then we need current year to date, but we're in quarter two. So here we have year to date, and then I'll choose apply. Now our level one is tagged. Next, we'll want a level three tag for the table. So we're going to go back over here and we need to select just the introductory sentence and the table. And if we had footnotes, we would include those as well. 
This time we don't need to keep the selection with the end of the section. We'll go up here and choose the block tag. So we'll choose no for the selection properties. And now again, we'll choose the search line item concepts link here in the XBRL text block window. And this time we're going to choose a table level three for our current selection. And then in the outline selection step, we'll choose the share base compensation. And then tables is a subsection. The next step is select a table concept, but since we aren't dimensionalizing, we'll just choose finish. Now we're going to search for an XBRL concept and we'll use non-vested restricted stock unit. Keep in mind we're looking for a table text block. So we'll go ahead and search for this. And we'll choose the non-vested restricted stock units activity. So here we have the very first one. And we'll choose accept. Again, we'll need to apply a date. So we'll choose that link, search dates, date ranges. And again, we'll choose the year to date here under our current year and then apply. Now our level one and level three tags are applied and we'll move on to our level four detailed tags. To start tagging a table that's never been tagged before, we'll need to select that table. Let's scroll over a little bit here and then choose the table focus mode trapezoid here in the upper left hand corner. Now we click on the get started button here in the XBRL panel. Now we'll associate this with a share based compensation and then we'll choose details. We are going to be dimensionalizing these tags, so we're going to need a table structure and we'll accept the schedule of shared base compensation by shared base payment awards here, table. So we'll choose the accept icon, so that's the plus sign here with a circle. And then choose finish. Now we'll select the first cell in the table. So here we're going to go back into the document and choose that first cell. Now again, we'll search for the line item concepts and we'll use non-vested shares outstanding. Here under the data type, this time we want shares. And we can look at the second tag here. This looks exactly the way we saw it in the taxonomy analyzer. Share based compensation arrangement by share based payment award. Equity instruments other than options, non-vested number. We can confirm by choosing the information icon here. And here in the details, we can see that it's an instant tag. And we can look at the presentations tab to see that this is the same disclosure section that we saw in the analyzer. So it's part of the roll forward. You can see that here. And we're going to choose this tag here. Also note that all of the other tags we're going to be using were right there in that same section of the presentation tree. So if we continue to search and use the same functionality, we'll get all of our tags really quickly. And then we'll apply our tags that way going forward. So next we're going to look for granted. So we've selected that cell. Again, we go to search line item concepts. And here we could use the outline tree and select a tag from within the same presentation outline, or we could continue with a keyword search. We use non-vested shares outstanding. Change the data type to shares. And then we choose that second option again. We're going to go to information. And then we go to that presentations tab. And now we're looking for the one that says granted in period. So here we have it here. And again, we'll accept. Tagging the next two line items follows the same process. Now for the last item, we're going to be using the same concept we used here in the first cell. And the only thing different will be the date. We're using the same concept but a different date because one item is a beginning balance and the other is the ending balance. So we'll select that first cell and then here in the XBRL detailed tagging window we'll choose the copy icon. Now we'll go down and select that last cell and here we're going to choose paste. In this case we only want the line item concept so we'll uncheck the rest of the boxes and then choose paste. Now we'll turn on review mode here using the icon in the toolbar and then you can see that these all have a red highlight. So this indicates that we have errors so we have the red triangle in the corner and then the red highlight. In this case we need to apply our dates. For the first cell 
We'll highlight that and then we'll choose the search dates, date ranges. And here we'll choose as of, and this one was for 2013, so that was as of the end of the year, and choose apply. Now we'll choose the three in the middle since these are all the same. And here we can search for dates and date ranges for all three at once. And in this case, we'll choose the year to date. This goes through the 30th of June and apply. And then we'll choose the last one. Choose that date link. And the as of date for 630 and then apply. Now you can see that all of the highlight has turned green as well as the triangles. Now we need to add one more thing. We need to clarify the type of award by using the award type axis. The axis and domain already exist in our outline because of our table selection in the wizard. We'll select all the numbers we've been working with, so the entire column. And then here we'll choose Add Axis. This will clarify what type of award this is because our tags don't tell us that these are restricted stock units. They just tell us that they're equity instruments. The taxonomy breaks down into groups of concepts by options versus equity instruments other than options. Within equity instruments other than options, there is the award type axis to differentiate the different equity awards by dimension. Here we'll choose award type axis in the XBRL concept search box. Now let's pull this up so we can see this a little bit better. So here we're back in the XBRL detail tagging window and under Axis, we need to scroll down a little bit so we can see Search Domains Members. Now we'll need to search for Restricted Stock Units. And here we'll filter on the Domain Member Type. And we'll choose the first option here for Restricted Stock Units RSUs Member. Now we have all of our tagging applied and we'll take a look at our fact properties. Go down to the bottom of the editing area and choose the fact properties icon. So here it is in the lower right hand corner. And then the fact properties panel will open at the bottom. Now we can look through by selecting cells in the table. And then as I move through, I can see that they're all set up as shares units. Here as I click through, you can see that's stable and they all have the same accuracy in the thousands. We can also look at our source values compared to our XBRL fact values here on the left. For vested, for example, we have a negative XBRL fact value and we have a negative number. A negative amount of vested shares doesn't make sense, so here we're going to reverse the source value sign. So choose the radio button here for yes, and then we'll need to accept here, so we have a green check mark, apply the property change. Now we'll have a positive amount of vested shares. Next we'll look to see if we can apply any calculation assertions. If we select the numbers here in the column, we're going to select the entire column. Then we know that we have to be within the same date context with two or more line item concepts. And here we can see that we have different dates and date ranges. The year to date has three concepts which may require an assertion, but because no total is reported, no assertion is needed. So this means we cannot apply a calculation assertion here. So next we'll move on to clean up the XBRL outline. Now we'll go over here and expand the XBRL outline box. Let's go ahead and close this. And we'll expand that panel. Here we can see the share based compensation. And here we have the level one tag. And then we'll right click and choose change label. This will open the XBRL label editor. Now we can change that label to exactly what we have in our disclosure, which is share-based compensation. We want to have this label in the level 1 tag match the wording of the disclosure note title. So I'm going to change that share base compensation and then we don't need the rest here, so I'll delete that. And I'll choose apply and close. Next we'll choose the level 3 concept in the outline, so here we have the schedule of non-vested restricted stock units activities the table text block, and again we'll right click and choose change label. Now this one is fine except that we don't want to keep that table text block at the end. So we can just select that and delete. 
Now again, we'll choose Apply and Close. Now in our Level 4 Details section here, let's scroll down a little bit. We have a lot of stuff in our outline. When a table structure is added during tagging, the native axes are automatically added along with the table, but often not all the axes are used, and the unused ones can be deleted from the outline. So we're going to drag the award type axis up here to the top. Now there are a number of axes that we're not using, so we have plan name all the way down here through vesting. So I'm going to select that, use my shift key to select all of them, and then we can right click, and here we'll choose delete item. And then we'll need to confirm. One more thing is that we have a roll forward here, but we're not using a roll forward abstract. So we'll select the abstract for share based compensation arrangement here. Let's stretch this out a little more so we can see all of it. Here we have the payment award line items and then we're going to right click to add a child under this concept. In the Xperial concept search box we'll use the same methodology we've used before with the presentation tree. So here we're going to enter non-vested shares outstanding and we're going to search for shares as the data type. Now we'll go with that second option and we'll choose the info icon again. Go to presentations. And then we can see that roll forward concept here at the top. So we'll accept that. Now we have to move our four concepts under that roll forward. So let's go ahead and use shift again. And we can drag them underneath. Next, we'll turn on the Highlighter tool here to highlight concept taggings in the editor. And now as we select each one, we can see here that both the top and the bottom one are highlighted. And then let's go down through here and we can see each one. And we can see that the outstanding, granted, vested, and forfeited all look good. Now we need to make two different line items for the outstanding amount. We need to create separate period start and period end labels in the outline to complete the roll forward structure. So if we go back, we can see that we have both of these highlighted. So to do this, we're going to select that item, then we'll go to the label editor. So right click. So change label. So here we have a terse roll. Now let's change this to period start and then we'll apply and close. Move this out a little bit so we can see the entire outline. Then we'll choose the icon right next to the label drop down. So this is reuse selected concept with alternate label. So here in the select preferred label for the duplicate concept, this time we'll choose period end and then apply. So now you can see that we have the one here for the start. So let's bring one of these down to the bottom. And then you can see the orange highlighting in the document to see that everything is in the correct order. Now to quickly update these labels rather than doing it manually like we did before, we'll go to the label references icon in the toolbar. And then we'll choose enable label references. Now we can drag each concept and this will automatically update our preferred label. So we have the first one here and we'll drag it up. And then here we can take the next one, drag it to granted. And then this one here for vested. And then this one for forfeited. You can see when that circle there, the green circle with a plus sign, turns green, then we're ready to drop. And here we'll drag the last one, so see it's red and now it's green. And now we have all of these named exactly as we have them in the document. Now everything's looking pretty good, so we'll finish up by doing a section level validation. Here I'm going to move this panel back over. And now we'll choose the drop down menu here under validate for section validation. The validate XBRL taxonomy progress bar will display and then the results will come up in that notification panel at the bottom. 
So here we have notifications. So it lives in the same place as the fact properties panel. And this is an indication here that the forfeited tag was less than zero and this concept should not have a negative value except in very rare cases. Now, if we double click on that, we can go to our location finder and it brings us to that exact fact here in the table. And now again, we can go to the fact properties and we can reverse the source value sign for this and then accept. So this is the same thing that we did for vested, but we missed this the first time. Now we can see the XBRL outline has been updated and let's go back and validate again. So back to section validation. And this allows us to catch things in a section now instead of potentially having numerous errors when we do a project level validation at the end. So now we have no issues found. And we have a completely tagged disclosure. At this point, you would want to share your XBRL to preserve all the changes and updates. This video has demonstrated how to tag a disclosure in WDES from start to finish, including reviewing your disclosure taxonomy in the Taxonomy Analyzer, tagging the note, the table, and then the details, setting XBRL fact properties, determining whether we must define calculation assertions, reviewing and cleaning up the XBRL outline, and running section validation.